Hey guys, today I bring you an impressive story that will make you rethink everything you know about life in the future. Let's follow the story of Anselmo Garcia, a young man who had a near-death experience and received a shocking revelation about the true nature of the earth and what is to come. Stay until the end, because this story could change your view of the world. Before you start, let us know in the comments which city you're watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more intriguing stories like this. Hello, my name is Anselmo. You know, when you go through something that no one else has gone through, or at least no one you know, people look at you differently. They don't understand and what people don't understand they fear or ridicule. I was just another regular guy, you know, a college student in Los Angeles in the early 90s. Nothing special, nothing that made me stand out from the crowd. I liked parties, drinking with friends, enjoying life like any young person. But everything changed one night. A night that should have been like any other, but ended up being the turning point of my life. Before I tell you what happened, I want you to understand one thing. I'm not crazy. I don't use drugs. I don't have mental problems. What I'm about to tell you is real. As real as the air you breathe right now. I know this may seem hard to believe, but I ask that you keep an open mind. After all, there are more things between heaven and earth than our vain philosophy dreams of, isn't there? For a long time I kept this story to myself. I was afraid of what people would think, what they would say. My own family thought I was losing my mind when I tried to tell them. They took me to talk to the church pastor, thinking he could bring me back to my senses. But how to explain something that goes beyond reason? How can we put into words an experience that transcends our everyday reality? So I shut up. For years, decades even, I kept everything inside. But now, something has changed. I feel like I need to share, even if anonymously. Maybe someone out there needs to hear this. Maybe you who are reading now are that someone. I don't know how to explain it, but I feel like the time has come to tell my story. What I am going to narrate happened many years ago, but to me, it seems like it was yesterday. Every detail is engraved in my memory as if it had been sculpted with iron and fire. It was the day I stood on the brink of death. The day I saw beyond the veil that separates our world from what comes after. And believe me, what I saw changed everything I thought I knew about life, death, and the purpose of our existence. So if you're ready, I'll take you on a journey. A journey to the edge between life and death. A journey that began on an ordinary night in Los Angeles and ended... Well, actually, it never ended, really. It, it continues to this day, shaping every aspect of my life. Get ready, because what I'm about to tell you could change the way you see the world. I know it changed mine. It was a Friday night in Los Angeles. The air was hot and heavy filled with the promise of another night of partying and fun. I had just turned 21, I was in the prime of my youth, and I felt invincible. That night, some friends and I decided to go to a new club that had just opened downtown. The place was packed, the music was deafening, and the lights flashed at a frantic pace. We started drinking as soon as we arrived. First there were some beers, then we moved on to stronger drinks. Tequila, vodka, anything they offered us. We drank. I wasn't counting, but I know I drank a lot more than I should have. The hours passed and I felt increasingly dizzy, more disconnected from reality. At some point, I decided I needed fresh air. I told my friends I was going for a walk and stumbled out the door of the club. The contrast between the club's noisy, stuffy interior and the relatively quiet street was shocking. The cool night air hit me like a slap in the face but it wasn't enough to sober me up. I started walking aimlessly, just wanting to escape the ringing in my ears and the dizziness that was overwhelming me. I don't know how long I walked or how far I went. At some point, I saw a bus stop with an empty bench. It felt like paradise at that moment. I staggered over and sank heavily onto the bench. The world was spinning around me and I closed my eyes, hoping that would help ease the dizziness. It was at that moment that everything started to change. Suddenly I felt like I was floating. At first I thought it was just the effect of the alcohol, but when I opened my eyes, 
I realized that something very strange was happening. I could see my own body, still sitting on the bench at the bus stop. But I... Well, the I that was conscious was floating above him. It was as if I had stepped out of my body and was looking down on it. I should have been terrified. I mean, seeing your own body from the outside isn't something that happens every day, right? But strangely, I felt calm. More than calm, actually. I felt a peace I had never experienced before. It was as if all the problems, all the worries I carried, had simply disappeared. I stayed there, floating, observing my body for a while. I can't say how much time has passed. It could have been minutes or hours. The notion of time seemed to have lost its meaning. It was then that I noticed something above me. A tunnel, suspended in the air, with a soft light emanating from within. Without thinking twice, without fear or hesitation, I felt drawn towards that tunnel. And so began my journey beyond this world, a journey that would forever change my understanding of life, death, and everything in between. Entering that tunnel was like diving into a dream. You know that floating feeling we sometimes get when we're about to fall asleep? It was something similar but much more intense and real. The tunnel seemed to have no end. It was as if I were traveling through the very fabric of the universe. The walls, if I can call it that, were not solid. They were made of light, a light that pulsed and changed color constantly. Blue, purple, gold, colors I didn't even know existed. As I progressed through the tunnel, I began to hear sounds. At first they were just distant whispers, impossible to understand. But little by little, they became clearer. There were voices, hundreds, maybe thousands of voices. Some seemed to be singing, others talking, some even laughing. It was as if I were passing through a large hall full of people except I couldn't see anyone. The strangest thing is that I wasn't moving in the traditional sense. There was no sensation of wind or physical displacement. It was more like the tunnel was moving around me, taking me where I needed to go. Suddenly I had the feeling that I was not alone on this journey. I couldn't see anyone, but I felt presences around me. They were welcoming, comforting presences. As if old friends were accompanying me, guiding me. As I progressed through the tunnel, I began to have flashes of memories. They weren't just my memories, you know. They were scenes from the history of humanity. I saw pyramids being built. I saw great battles. I saw moments of joy and sadness from people I never met. It was as if the entire history of the world was passing before my eyes. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the journey through the tunnel came to an end. In front of me I saw a light. But it was no ordinary light. It was the brightest and at the same time softest light I have ever seen. It was as if this light was made of pure love, if that makes any sense. I felt drawn to that light like a magnet. There was no fear. There was no hesitation. I was only certain that this was where I should go. And so, I let myself be completely enveloped by that light. It was at that moment that I had the most incredible feeling of my entire life. It was as if I was being embraced by the universe itself. I felt a love so deep, so unconditional, that it is impossible to describe in words. All the pain, all the fears, all the insecurities I had ever felt simply disappeared. And then, in the midst of all this light and love, I saw him. A man wearing a white robe, with a face that radiated kindness and compassion. I didn't need an introduction to know who he was. It was Jesus. He didn't speak, at least not in words. But somehow... I knew exactly what he wanted to tell me. He reached out and touched my forehead. In that instant, everything changed again. I was transported to another place, another time. I saw scenes of my future unfolding before my eyes. I saw the consequences of my choices, both the good and the bad. I saw the impact my actions would have not only on my life, but on the lives of other people. It was there, at that moment, that I understood that I was at a crossroads. The choices I would make from that moment on would not only affect me but had the power to change the course of many lives. 
And so my journey through the tunnel came to an end. But my real journey was just beginning. There I was, enveloped by that indescribable light, face to face with Jesus. It wasn't like the paintings you see in churches or the portraits in religious books. It was more real, more alive than anything I'd ever seen. His eyes, man, his eyes were like oceans of compassion. When he looked at me, I felt like he was seeing my entire life, every good and bad moment, every joy and every mistake. But there was no judgment in that look, just a love so deep it hurt. He didn't speak, at least not in words. It was more like we were communicating directly mind to mind, soul to soul. There was no need for words. Every thought, every emotion was shared instantly. Jesus reached out and touched my forehead. The moment his fingers touched me, it was as if all the knowledge in the universe had been poured into my mind. I saw things that I can't even begin to describe. I understood things that are beyond human understanding. But amid all this cosmic knowledge, there was something very personal, very specific to me. I saw my future unfolding before my eyes, like a high-definition movie. First, I saw a dark scenario. I saw myself older, sitting in a doctor's office. The doctor had a serious expression on his face. He was telling me that my liver was failing, the result of years of alcohol abuse. I saw the fear in my own eyes, the regret for all the wrong choices I had made. But then, the scene changed. I saw another future. A different future. In this one, I was also older. But it was a completely different version of me. I was healthy, happy. I found myself working as a social worker, helping young people who were going through difficulties. I saw the positive impact I was having on these people's lives. It was at that moment that I understood. I understood that I was being shown two possible paths, two versions of my future. One path of self-destruction and repentance, and another of redemption and purpose. But Jesus was not finished. He had more to show me, more to teach me. And what came next was something that completely changed my perception of the world and reality. Jesus showed me that our world, Earth, is not just the physical place we think it is. It's also a kind of spiritual prison. I saw dark beings, entities that Jesus called beings of darkness. These beings were working together with powerful people here on Earth. Their goal? Keep human souls trapped in ignorance and suffering. It was a complex system, carefully maintained to prevent people from awakening to their true spiritual nature. I saw how these dark beings and their human allies manipulated events, controlled governments, influenced the media, everything to keep people distracted, confused, focused only on the material and forgetting the spiritual. It was a shocking revelation. I realized that much of what we consider normal in our society is actually part of this control system. Rampant consumerism, the relentless pursuit of status and wealth, even certain forms of entertainment. It's all part of the plan to keep our souls asleep. But along with this grim revelation came a message of hope. Jesus showed me that despite all the efforts of these dark beings, the light of truth cannot be completely extinguished. There are people working to awaken others, to break the chains of this prison. As I absorbed all these revelations, Jesus continued to show me more. It was as if each new vision opened a door to even greater understanding. But what came next was something that shook me in a way I didn't expect. Jesus showed me, in even more detail, the two possible futures he had presented to me before. In the first scenario, the darkest, I saw my life unfold as a series of endless parties, lost nights in bars, superficial relationships that never lasted. I saw my health deteriorating, my body aging prematurely due to alcohol abuse. The worst of all was seeing the emptiness in my eyes. Even surrounded by people, even in the middle of noisy parties, I felt so alone. I found myself missing opportunities, disappointing my family, pushing away people who really cared about me. And in the end, there I was, in that doctor's office, receiving the news that my liver was failing. But then Jesus showed me the other way. In this future, I saw myself making the decision to change my life. 
I found myself struggling with addiction, seeking help, rebuilding relationships that I had neglected. It wasn't an easy path. I saw many moments of doubt, of temptation, of almost giving up. But I also saw the strength I found to continue. In this future, I saw myself graduating from college, not just passing my classes but really learning, dedicating myself. I found myself discovering a passion for helping others, especially young people who were going through the same struggles I had faced. I saw myself working as a social worker, making a difference in the lives of so many people. I saw the faces of the young people I helped. I saw hope returning to their eyes. And the amazing thing is, that by helping these people, I was healing myself too. In this future, I wasn't just alive. I was actually living. It had purpose. It had meaning. He was no longer that lost and confused young man, but a man who had found his place in the world. It was at that moment that I understood the true power of free will. Jesus was not there to tell me which path to choose. He was showing me the possibilities, giving me the chance to see the consequences of my choices before I even made them. And that's when the magnitude of what was happening really hit me. This wasn't just about me. It was about all the lives I could touch, all the people I could help if I chose the right path. It was about being part of something bigger than myself. I remember feeling a mix of emotions at that moment. There was fear, of course. Fear of not being strong enough to make the right choice. But there was also hope. A hope I had never felt before. And above all, there was a sense of responsibility. I realized that each of us has this power. The power to choose. The power to change not just our own lives, but to positively impact the lives around us. And with that power comes great responsibility. Jesus didn't need to say anything. The look in his eyes said it all. He was giving me a chance, an opportunity to start over, to make a difference. But the choice was mine. It always was and always would be mine. It was at that moment that I understood that my life, which I always thought was just mine, was actually connected to so many others. Every choice I made, every action had the potential to create ripples that spread far beyond what I could see. And there, before Jesus, I made my choice. But Jesus wasn't done with me. He had more to show me, more to teach me. And what came next was something that shook the foundations of everything I believed I knew about the world. Jesus began to show me a reality that went far beyond our physical world. He revealed to me that Earth, the place we call home, is not just a planet spinning in space. It's also a kind of spiritual prison. I know this sounds crazy. Believe me, I thought so too when I saw it for the first time. But what Jesus showed me was so real, so vivid, there was no denying it. I saw beings, entities that Jesus called beings of darkness. They weren't like the demons you see in horror movies. They were more subtle, more insidious, and they were working together with certain humans, people in positions of power and influence. Their goal? Keep human souls trapped. Trapped in ignorance, fear, suffering. It was a complex system, carefully maintained to prevent people from awakening to their true spiritual nature. I saw how these dark beings and their human allies manipulated events on a grand scale, wars, economic crises, even certain cultural trends. It was all part of their plan. Everything designed to keep people distracted, confused, focused only on the material and forgetting the spiritual. But what was most shocking was seeing how this system operated at the individual level. I saw how they influenced thoughts, fed fears and insecurities, created artificial desires, all to keep people trapped in cycles of self-destructive behavior. Rampant consumerism, the relentless pursuit of status and wealth, addiction to social media, even certain forms of entertainment, it was all part of the plan to keep our souls asleep. It was a devastating revelation. I realized that much of what we consider normal in our society is actually part of this control system. The things we think make us happy are often the same things that keep us stuck. But along with this grim revelation, came a message of hope. 
Jesus showed me that despite all the efforts of these dark beings, the light of truth cannot be completely extinguished. There are people working to awaken others, to break the chains of this spiritual prison. And most importantly, Jesus showed me that each of us has the power to free ourselves, that our true nature, our spiritual essence, is stronger than any prison they can build around us. I understood then that my near-death experience wasn't just about me. It was a wake-up call, to free myself and help others to free themselves too. It was at that moment that I realized the true meaning of freedom. It's not just about doing what we want, but about freeing ourselves from the illusions that hold us back, about awakening to our true nature. And with that understanding came enormous responsibility. Because once you see the truth, once you awaken, there is no going back to sleep. You have a choice to make. Ignore what you've learned and return to the matrix or accept the truth and fight for freedom, yours and that of others. There, before Jesus, I made my choice. And that choice would change the course of my life forever. While I was still trying to process all these revelations, Jesus had more to show me. He looked me in the eyes, and in that look I saw a love so deep, so unconditional, that it hurt. But I also saw something more. An expectation. A calling. Jesus began to show me scenes from the world. People suffering, fighting, looking for something they didn't even know what it was. I saw young people lost in drugs. I saw families falling apart. I saw people sinking into depression and anxiety. And in every face, in every pair of eyes, I saw a reflection of myself, of what I could have become if I hadn't had this experience. But then, the scenes changed. I saw people waking up to the truth, breaking the chains that held them back. I saw communities forming, people supporting each other on their journey of spiritual awakening. And in the midst of it all, I saw myself. I found myself talking to people, sharing my story, helping them see beyond the illusions that surrounded them. I found myself working as a social worker, but not just dealing with the superficial problems. I was helping people reconnect with their true essence, find strength and purpose in their lives. It was then that Jesus spoke to me, not with words, but directly to my soul. He told me I had a choice to make, that I could go back to my old life, pretend none of this had happened, or I could accept the mission that was being offered to me. He explained to me that I was an important piece in a larger puzzle, the full meaning of which I could not yet understand, that my near-death experience was not an accident, but an opportunity. An opportunity to awaken and help others to awaken too. Jesus told me that my mission, if I chose to accept it, would be to help people break free from the spiritual chains that kept them bound. Show them that there is more to life than just what we can see and touch. That each of us is more than our physical body, more than our current circumstances. He warned me it wouldn't be easy. That I would face challenges. That there would be people who wouldn't believe in me. Who might even ridicule me but he also assured me that i would never be alone on this journey that he would always be with me guiding me and strengthening me i was overwhelmed by all of this it was a lot of responsibility a lot of weight to carry part of me wanted to refuse to go back to the safety of my old life but another part a part i barely knew yearned for this challenge for this opportunity to make a difference and that's when I understood something crucial. This call to mission was not an imposition. It was an invitation. Jesus was offering me the chance to participate in something bigger than myself. To be an agent of change in the world. But the choice was mine. At that moment, looking into Jesus' eyes, feeling all the love and trust He placed in me, I made my choice. I accepted the mission. I accepted the challenge to awaken, to free myself and to help others do the same. And with that acceptance, I felt a change within me, as if a flame had been lit in my heart, a flame of purpose and determination. I knew my life would never be the same again, and for the first time I was genuinely excited about it. After accepting the mission that Jesus offered me, I felt that my time on that spiritual plane was coming to an end. But before I went back I had one last question for Jesus, a question that many of us have asked at some point in our lives. When will your second coming be? I asked, not with words, but with my thought, my intention. 
Jesus looked at me with those eyes full of love and compassion. He smiled, a smile that seemed to contain all the wisdom in the universe. And then, he answered me. Not with words, but with a feeling, an understanding that was planted directly in my soul. The message was clear. The exact moment of the second coming is known only by God the Father. It is not up to us to know the day or the hour. What matters is how we live our lives now, how we fulfill the mission given to us. With that answer, I felt peace settle within me. I realized that the question itself wasn't as important as I thought. What really mattered was what I would do with the knowledge and mission I had received. Then Jesus reached out and touched my forehead once again. The instant his fingers touched me, I felt a force pulling me back. It was like I was being sucked into a tunnel, but this time in the opposite direction. I went through all those scenes from the history of humanity again, but now in reverse order. The voices that were once clear began to become distant until they became just whispers. The vibrant colors of the light tunnel began to fade, and then, with a loud snap, I felt myself being pulled back into my body. It was a strange sensation, like wearing a very tight outfit after being free-floating. I felt the weight of my body, the solidity of the bus stop bench beneath me, the cool night air on my skin. I opened my eyes slowly, blinking several times to adjust to physical reality. I was back at the bus stop where it all started. The world around me seemed exactly the same as before, but I... I was completely changed. The first thing I noticed was that I wasn't drunk anymore. All the drunkenness was gone, as if it had never existed. I felt more sober and alert than I had ever felt in my life. I looked at my hands, flexing my fingers, feeling the solidity of my physical body. It felt strange to be back after having experienced the freedom of existing without a body. I got up from the bench, feeling a little wobbly in my legs. Not from drunkenness, but from the emotion of everything I had experienced. I looked around at the streets of Los Angeles that had once seemed so familiar. Now everything seemed different. Not physically, but in the way I perceived things. I saw people passing by, each carrying their own story, their own struggles. And for the first time, I really saw them. Not just their physical bodies, but their souls, their essences. I saw the divine potential in each of them, even if many were asleep to this reality. After that night at the bus stop, my life changed completely. It wasn't an overnight transformation. These things never are. But it was the beginning of a journey that continues to this day. The first thing I did was stop drinking. It wasn't easy. Alcohol had been my escape, my crutch for so long. But after what I saw, after what I experienced, the idea of numbing my mind with alcohol seemed wrong. As if I was wasting the gift given to me. My friends didn't understand at first. They thought it was just a phase, that soon I would be the old me again. But when they saw that I was serious that I had really changed, some people moved away. It was painful, but necessary. I realized that some friendships were based only on superficial fun, on the escapism that alcohol provided. But not everything was a loss. Some friends stayed by my side, supporting me even without fully understanding what was happening to me. And little by little, I started meeting new people, people who shared my search for a greater purpose in life. I dedicated myself to my studies like never before. I came to see my education not just as a means to get a job, but as a tool to enable me to help others. My grades improved and for the first time, I felt like I was actually learning, not just memorizing information to pass tests. I started meditating, studying different philosophies and spiritual practices. Not to blindly follow any of them, but to broaden my understanding, to find tools that could help me in my mission. After graduating, I decided I wanted to work as a social worker. I knew that this was the way to fulfill the mission entrusted to me. I moved to a big city, I won't say which one, to maintain my anonymity, and started working with at-risk youth. It was challenging at first, seeing so many young people struggling with the same demons I had faced, seeing them trapped in the same traps that almost destroyed me. 
It was painful, but it was also motivating, because I knew I could help them, not just with empty advice or temporary solutions, but by showing them a completely new perspective on life. Of course, I couldn't just come in and tell them about my near-death experience. Most would think I'm crazy. So I learned to be subtle, planting seeds of awareness, awakening in them curiosity about something greater. Sometimes it was as simple as listening, really listen, without judgment, without trying to fix everything immediately. Other times it was about challenging their limiting beliefs, showing them that they were capable of much more than they believed. And little by little, I saw changes happening. I saw young people who were on the brink find the strength to change their lives. I saw families reconnecting. I saw people finding purpose where before there was only despair. I'm not going to lie and say it was always easy. There were difficult days, days when I felt overwhelmed by the magnitude of the task ahead, days when I doubted myself, when I wondered if I had imagined it all. But in those moments, I remembered the look of Jesus, the unconditional love I felt. It reminded me of the mission I accepted, and that gave me strength to continue. Over time, I started to meet other people who had similar experiences to me, people who had also glimpsed something beyond this physical world. We form a kind of informal community, supporting each other, sharing our experiences and insights. And so day after day, year after year, I lived this new life, a life of purpose, a life dedicated to awakening others to their true nature. It's not the path I imagined for myself when I was younger, but it's a path that brings me deep satisfaction, a feeling of being exactly where I'm supposed to be. Today, years after that fateful night, I'm still trying to fully understand what happened to me. There are days when everything seems so clear, so vivid as if it happened yesterday. In others, it seems like a distant dream, something almost unreal. But one thing is certain. That experience changed everything. It changed the way I see the world, how I see myself, how I see others. It changed my purpose in life. I still work as a social worker. I still deal with young people at risk. But now, I see my work in a different way. I'm not just helping them overcome immediate problems. I'm planting seeds of spiritual awakening. Every young person I serve, every family I help, is an opportunity to make a difference. Not just in a practical sense, but in a deeper sense. It's a chance to show someone that there is more to life than what we can see on the surface. Sometimes I find myself thinking about that vision Jesus showed me. Those two possible futures, one of destruction, one of purpose. And I feel grateful that I had the chance to choose the right path. But I also think a lot about the spiritual prison revelation. It's something that still haunts me, that still makes me question much of what we see as normal in our society. I see people around me often stuck in cycles of self-destructive behavior, seeking happiness in things that can never truly satisfy them. And my heart aches for them. But at the same time, I see hope. I see more and more people waking up, questioning, searching for something deeper. I see an awakening happening slow but steady, and that's where my role comes in. I still don't fully understand my place in the great puzzle of life, but I know I have a role to play. Every life I touch, every person I help awaken, is a step in the right direction. Sometimes I wonder if any of the young people I helped were the reason I was chosen to have this experience. Maybe there is someone specific that I will still meet. Someone who will need exactly my story to find their own path. But at the end of the day, I realize that the why doesn't matter so much. What matters is what I do with what I was given. The experience I had, the knowledge I received, all of this is a responsibility. A responsibility to live a life of purpose, to make a difference where I can. I still fight the forces that keep people trapped. Not with violence or direct confrontation, but with love, with understanding, with the light of truth. Every act of kindness, every word of encouragement, every moment of genuine connection is a small victory against the darkness. And so I move forward, day after day. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if I will see the great change I'm working for in my lifetime. But I know I'm on the right path. 
I know that every step I take, no matter how small it may seem, is important. For those reading this, I want to leave a message. You are more than you think you are. There is more to life than what you can see. Don't be afraid to question, to seek, to awaken to your true nature. The journey can be scary at times, but it is worth every step. And if you feel lost, if you feel like you're trapped in a prison you can't see, remember, you have the power to break free. The key is within you. All you need to do is have the courage to use it. As for me, I will continue my mission. I will continue to fight for freedom, mine and others. Because now I know, this is what I came here to do. That is my purpose. And no matter how hard it is, no matter how many obstacles I face, I won't give up. I can't give up. There is much at stake, and each soul that awakens is a victory worth every effort. And who knows? Maybe one day when my mission here is complete, I can return to that place of light. Look into Jesus' eyes again and say, Mission accomplished. Until then, I move forward, one day at a time, one soul at a time, always remembering that night that changed everything and the call I accepted.